Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to a new TW2020 video. You join us for our sixth annual, which is quite crazy to think. Uh, our presence is, uh, or well, probably was, our presence is all elite, is now the stars who shine. So this is our all women's pay-per-view. It started out with Mercedes winning the women's championship against Van der Rosa. And it culminates today with Veronica defending against Elena Black. Last year, Veronica and Mai Iwatani delivered a 90 rated spectacle. <clears throat> I don't think we'll quite reach those heights tonight, but it would be pretty class if we did so. 123,000 at Delhi's place last year. I'm assuming it'll probably be roughly the same this year because uh, it does hold 148,000 because we just kept increasing the attendance and it's a free show. However, I do feel um, the lack of big names will obviously hamper that because you're obviously missing the full male roster as well. So without further ado, we'll crack on, we'll explain storylines as we go. There's a few things that are building up to next week's show, which is of course the draft show. It's time to shake things up. So sit back, relax and enjoy AW The Star Who Shine 6 for 2028. Let's do it. So obviously there's a few things in the show that don't work out storyline-wise. It's just to have people on the card and have good matches. So the opener in front of nearly 140,000. So that might be one of our highest ever viewed shows. So a decent trios match. As Io Shirai, Kairi Hojo and Sari defeated the team of Isaiah Brookside, Bobby Tyler and uh, uh, Danny Luna in 12-28 when Io Shirai submitted Bobby with the Cloverleaf. Isaiah was a weak link with a 51 but look at that um, babyface side. 89 from Io Shirai still. 87 from Sari. A 68 from Kairi which is fair because I haven't really booked her particularly strong. But you can certainly see the booking of Danny Luna which has got her up to a 75. Overall the trio's match draws an 81 which is a very solid opener. Then we have our first big segment of the night. Good match up here. 4v4 action with the stable that Mercedes Money has. Her Trinity star, Liviana Morgan and Marvelous Maddie. Now they are taking on the team of Diona Perrazzo, Maya Iwatani, and of course former tag team champions Alexa Cabrera and Jade Cargo. So good match up. Alexa, Jade, Mayu and Diona defeat Mercedes Money, Trinity star. Liviana Morgan and Marvelous Maddie in 14 14 when Mayu Iwatani pinned Mercedes Money with the Dragon Suplex. During the matchup, we had Roxy C. Perez, that's the best name I could think of, turn on Mercedes. So the babyface turn for Roxy happens instantly. No segments, just straight off, complete success. It allows me then we can go Roxy versus Mercedes. It's a great opportunity to help our developer skills and start to try and build her up as a baby face rather than of course the prodigy of Mercedes Money. So good stuff there match wise. Performances you're always going to get something good at Iwatani. Mercedes was solid as well and fairly respectable performances I'd say from Diona, Jade and Alexa. The others, eh, they were okay. 77 overall. We then had a little backstage segment where the mixed tag team champions, the husband and wife of Jonathan Gresham and Jordan Grace, the champs, were attacked by Brandy Lorne and Richard Holiday. So an 80 rating here, uh, basically those two just get married in game. So there we go, there's a couple uh, and this is a little feud we're going to have. Basically it is going to be Brandy Lorne and Richard Holiday against Gresham and Grace for the mixed tag team champions chips on the uh, draft show. So overall Holiday was good, Gresham fantastic, Brandy Lorne was a little bit underwhelming. We haven't really pushed her well, but our stats have turned out really good. Uh, so hopefully, all good going forward. We then had a fatal four way for the Shine Championship and new champ alert as Jamie Hayter put up for grabs against Chris Statlander, Steph Delander, and Killer Kelly, both from Collision. In this bout, we had some great wrestling and good heat. It was Killer Kelly who picked up the win over Jamie, Steph, and Chris in 13.34 when she submitted Steph to Lander. So new Shine Champion, she brings us an 80 rated segment, an 83 performance. In fact all performances were 70 or higher, so good stuff across the board. Uh, Punk of course in the corner of Killer Kelly, that's one of his kind of wrestlers that he's mentoring. But it means it's a good opportunity there we can move uh, Killer Kelly over to Rampage, or to be fair, we could actually move the title over to Rampage and uh, have the Queen of AW Championship over to uh, swap that over to Collision, or shine over to Collision and that over to Rampage. So that's going to give me food for thought. Still don't know where we're going to take Killer Kelly, but anyway, regardless, she will be the Shine Champion. So she could stay. Julia could be the one 
that goes to uh, goes to, to Rampage. Interesting. And a celebration after it, so 82. Good stuff there from Killer Kelly. But it gives you an idea how much this gets booked on the fly. Yeah, we then have a little promo from Roxy. She just explains what she had done earlier on. She said she was just fire the BF. You know, tired of being basically a lackey, basically being blamed for everything by Mercedes Monet. She appreciates that Mercedes, you know, taught her a lot of things, but it's time for her to show that she's not just a minion, you know, she's someone that is the future of this business, the future of this company, and it's time for her to start showing that. So she believes that she's ready to stand on her own two feet and take on the world. Her stats aren't great, although obviously she's still way young, so she could develop into a great worker. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good, exciting talents coming through. Especially one that went to WWE and is coming back. The contract signed, it just it doesn't happen for our two weeks, but uh, yeah, you'll see them down the line. We'll keep their name under wraps. So, 71 for the segment. I did say Julia was going to take the Queen of AW title. Fuji's championship change in a great match up here. Probably should have been eventy with that kind of performance. But yeah, with uh, Takuma Aroha defeat Julia on Collision. And I thought, you know what, let's actually put these two in a match-up for the championship here. Superb wrestling, great heat, and uh, Takuma Aroha defeated Julia in 13.45 with a triangle choke. She's in the Kuna of AW title. Maybe I won't change, move the belts, but as I say, it gives an opportunity that Julia can then move from collision. She can go to Dynamite or Rampage. But Takuma's one of those ones, she can have all the overness in the world and do a great performance, or she can like lose a lot. And still, because of her psychology, put on a great performance. So, like, she can be a main event player with, with, with a shadow of a doubt, but she's such a solid hand. I can utilise her up and down the card, and it doesn't take too long to get her over and, and get her back up to the top. So, 89 is uh, solid stuff for the new Queen of AW champion. And after the matchup, Julia is raging. So, 86, she's really over, but she's very angry. So, what's next for her? That's still to be decided. Move along, we had the Women's Tag Team Championships on the line. Of course, this one we know happened uh, with Priscilla and JC beating down Becky Quinn and Bailey. But it was a good match up here that saw the Babyface Champions pick up the win in 13 3 when Bailey pinned JC with the Bailey to Bailey suplex. Second defence of the Women's Tag Titles. Performance wise, you can see there Becky and Priscilla both on a different level from Bailey and JC. But overall, a 77 is still fairly decent in the Women's Tag Division. We had a little promo here. This was meant to be my cheap one to get me 100 rating. It was just Dwayne, Mick and Steve basically promoting everything's going to change next week when we flip everything over. So uh, yeah, that didn't go quite to plan. So the Julia segment is still the best promo angle. So I don't think we'll be netting a 100. I do feel the main event might, might suffer a little bit. But this was good. It was about that had great wrestling and good heat. As we had a fatal five way, the winner to get a women's title shot on next week's show and it is going to be Anna J as she defeated Veni, Tai Melo, Hikaru Shida and Konami in 1506 when she pinned Hikaru Shida with a scissors kick. 85 for Anna J. I'll, I'll be honest she's been in one of the training schools and her stats have just went amazing. She's really over as well so that obviously helps but good performances across the board. You know it's bad when the weakest performance is Hikaru Shida. We are 73, but I can also say Ty Melo and Konami both benefited from runs as Queen of AW champion, uh, and Veri's always been a fantastic hand. So 87, great stuff there. Anna's getting a little bit stale, but she will challenge for that women's championship against either Veronica or Alina Black. And Konami's got a new spot. Excellent. Love to see it. Little promo from Anna, 81 just says it doesn't matter who's going to be champion, it's her time to be the women's champion here in AEW if it means she's the one after 100 for Veronica or if she dethrones Elena Black, it will be Anna J as future women's champion. We also had the TBS championship on the line, of course this one was built up with Yao Mashta challenging the champ Tony Storm, these two put together great wrestling and good heat. And Tony Storm picked up the win in 13.47 with Strong Zero, giving her her fifth defence of the TBS Championship. These two clicked fantastically. An 88 performance from Mayu, a 79 from Tony, and it produced an 88 rated matchup so far. Uh, still a show. Solid stuff. Delighted with that one. And, uh, yeah. Watch out for the shoe, as Tony would say. But good stuff there. Two great matches for the TBS and the Queen of AW Championship, so delighted with that. 
It's a shame they may have to properly let it down. So we get the hype promo for Elena Black, just basically saying this is that she's going to be the one and make it 99 and 1. She's going to dethrone Veronica. She will do whatever it takes to defeat the dominant champion. We then get an elaborate entrance for the champion. This is it. She's getting ready for 100. All the banners are there, the pyro's going off, but it's only 82. I thought her overness would carry that to be a lot higher. She came out of it looking excellent. And the match itself drew a 74 as expected. Yeah, this was a bout that had fantastic heat and good wrestling, and we saw Elena Black defeat Veronica in 1818 by pinfall with a double underhook DDT after she was turned on by Saraya Knight. Elena Black is your new AEW World Champion. Veronica who goes 99 and 1. The 74 rating was always going to happen because as much as Veronica can carry psychology, she's still very rusty in the ring. Elena's pop cap to A, which meant we had to not just protect Veronica, keep her strong, we had to make her dominate, which is always going to happen the match rating. But I couldn't keep her as champion forever. I do want to move that belt about, give a few people a reign. I feel like Veronica then can get into like double uh, singles matches, tri uh, tag matches, trios matches, and just keep developing her skill set because she started at like 12 early teens for every start. We're in the 40s now. If we can get her wrestling like Roha, Shirai, all these people in like constant, no, no, no Martin Burrows just to win or lose, she's going to develop into a, a phenomenal talent. And a, a woman wrestler could generally easily get us 100 rated matches. So. The reign is over. There's obviously history with Saraya and Elena Black. They were formerly the Sisters of Sin. And, well, they won't be on a, a, the same level in terms of tag team partners as an alliance there. So we'll handle the changes. It's another quick heel turn with one segment because it was the last minute. But it was a complete success. And to end the show, is a beat down. As the Sisters of Sin, Veronica is beaten down by Elena Black and Saraya Knight as the new champion reigns supreme. So 76, I think we'll maybe get about an 84, 85 for a show. 83, that's fair enough. As I say, the main event was always going to be tricky, but the boosts and some good promos and some good matches were always going to be a good undercard for a, a, a limited main event. But overall, I'm delighted with it. A new champion. And as I say, next week, we shape, shake everything up with our men's division. People will move, some women will move as well. Hopefully give us fresh foods going into Revolution and further forward. So hopefully you join us for that one. It will be like a pay-per-view. We'll put some big matches on. Uh, but it will be a case of, oh, such and such has moved to whatever brand. But as always, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. At least a wee thumbs up if we appreciated. And remember to check out the Greater Software Forums, the Fantasy Booker subreddit. And hopefully I'll see you next week for the draft show and the week after for Revolution. So take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.